Hey mamas, welcome back to diaper sewing month. Today we're going to be doing just a basic insert or doubler with a serger and without a serger. So you don't need to have a serger. You can do a turned version or a serged version. The serged version is gonna be a lot simpler. I like to just have two layers of something like bamboo fleece or cotton fleece or more layers of a thinner fabric. But if you're gonna do like a four layer soaker, I tend to do two of these and then have them either be then sewn together at the end so they dry and wash easier. So you could do something like a flap style where they're just sewn at one side and then you've got multiple flaps or you could just pile them up and have them be like an insert and a doubler or two doublers. Or you could have them be sewn on both sides so that they're open in the middle and then they'll be easier to wash and dry that way. I don't like the really thick fabric soakers and inserts. It's just it's just too hard to keep them washed and then more energy for drying. It's it's a lot better to just have a long fold or a petal or just sewn together but not all the way around. So these are just two layers of heavy bamboo fleece, but you could do medium weight, you could do anything. If you're going to be adding a snap for the surged version, you want to do it ahead of time. You want to put in your snap and then clip and surge around it. For your turned version, you don't need to put the snap in until you're closing your turning hole. So depending on how you want to do it, that's those are the options. So let's start with the surged because it's super simple. You're just going to clip it or pin it inside so that it doesn't get run over by your serger and you're just going to surge around in the oval. You could do it straight across the top, bottom, side, side, and then, then you don't even need to worry about going around curves. So I think I'd probably would do that if I wasn't trying to make these two look the same. But if you're using somebody's pattern design where it's like wider at the back and then narrower at the bottom so that it has more coverage at the butt, then, you know, doing the curves is useful anyway. And you can make the turned version any shape as well. They can both be any shape, any size. It's just surging it together or sewing it together. And for the fleece, you want to put the fuzzy side in and the smooth side out. If you want to have something like a like a wicking fabric on the outside, you could do lova or micro fleece or wicking jersey. I'm going to be using some wicking jersey on the turned version. You could put a layer of wicking jersey or wicking peak or whatever you're going to use on your surge version as well. It would just go over top of your absorbent layers and then it would be stay dry against the baby skin. So to start, if you, if you wanted to put your snap in, you know, put your snap in. I'm not going to bother. Just get your serger out. Make sure that it's set right for the thickness of your fabric. You want your knife up because you're going to be tr trimming any corners if you're doing it rounded. And now you've got your surged insert. Nice rounded corners, nice and flat. If you want to make sure it doesn't pucker after shrinking or anything, or you could pre-wash it, but if you want, you could go around and sew down an oval or a shape. You could do like quilting pattern or something on the inside to help it stay flat. You could do something pretty. You could put your initial, you could put a logo, you could put just two concentric short circles, you know, there's so many options. Make it look unique if you want. Or you can just leave it like this. So there's a basic surged insert or doubler or soaker. And now let's do the sewn version. So what I've done here to prep for the sewn version is I've got two rounded edges, just like with the surged version. And I've got one layer of just flannel, but you can use anything. You can use stretchy or not stretchy. It doesn't matter. This whole thing could be layers of flannel. It would still work. And I would say you'd probably want to do about six layers of flannel compared to like two layers of the heavy bamboo fleece. 
but you wouldn't want to do any more than that in any one petal. So you've got your wicking layer. And you lay your absorbent layer in the inside of it, just evenly inside. And then you can pin it down. And you've got your backing layer. And you do the same thing. And you can sew a zigzag around the edge or a straight stitch. It doesn't matter. It's going to be inside. You just want it to be fairly even. And with this, you can pin it down so it doesn't move around. And then you're just going to go slow and sew with a wide wide straight stitch or a zigzag around the outside edge so that it is sewn to your outer piece and you're going to do this for both for both of these interior pieces both pieces that are prepped Okay, so now you've got your two pieces, each of them with absorbency added to your outer. And what you're gonna now do is place them face to face, just like you're sewing anything when you're gonna turn it. And you wanna line up your interiors as much as possible. Doesn't have to be perfect though. And now you want to either clip them or pin them together. And now you're just going to sew around the outside of the body there. And you don't want it to be perfectly up against the fabric. You want it to be a little bit of a gap for turning. And also it's easier with your foot. If you wanted to left justify your needle to make it get a little closer you can but you don't need it to be perfectly close and if you're going to be adding a snap this is the point where you would leave a turning hole on one of the narrower sides not on one of the wider sides so i'll add a snap to this one just to show you but so i would want to leave a turning hole at the top part rather than on the side And then as you get to the top, rather than going all the way closed, you're going to make a little bit of space for you to turn it right side in. So you can see for this one, we've left ourselves a turning hole. It doesn't have to be very big. You're not going to have to reach your hand inside it or anything. And now you can just go and trim fairly close, but not, not like super close like an eighth to a quarter of an inch out around. And you don't need to worry about fraying because that's all going to be interior. Okay, so now you've got everything sewn down and trimmed and you're just going to turn through your turning hole and you can make your soaker any shape rounded corners are easier than square ones just for 
making sure that the edges get pushed. But if you do more square ones, then you can use a screwdriver or your bodkin or something else to press it flat. So there you've got your turned insert. And if you wanted to do some sort of quilting or decoration, you could do that. You can also go and just top stitch around the edge to make, make sure that it lays nice and flat. I'm going to do that when I do my closing my turning hole. So at this point, say you want to add a snap so that it's a snap in soaker for like a fitted or if it's just a snap in for an all in two or if it's a doubler for an all in one that has a snap at the back, then you would take your snap pliers and your all. And I usually use a stud, a male snap end and keep the socket on the diaper or on whatever's going to be doubled. And you're gonna go through the back side. So the stay dry side would be against the baby. So you would do it on the non stay dry side. And if you're gonna have it be behind another soaker, then it doesn't matter. I go down probably like an inch and a half or an inch. You can make a, make a dot if you want to make it obvious. You could say like it's gonna be right there. You could put like a pen dot. You can go through that side. So now you've got your hole and you're gonna reach in and put your snap in. And if you're working with thinner fabrics, you'll wanna go through a couple layers, at least two layers of a flannel, probably three, just to make sure that your cap has got, you know, a good base, won't get pulled through. And you press it in. And now you've got your snap in there, see? So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna tuck this in to close our turning hole. And you can pin it or you can clip it. You're just gonna fold it in. Clip any extra threads. And you can start closing it from the top or you can finish at the top. You can start anywhere because the way that I'm going to do it is I'm going to close it while I top stitch. But if you weren't going to top stitch and you don't have to top stitch, you could just go back and forth along that to close that hole. I've moved my needle back to the center now, so it's not left justified anymore. And I am just going to sew right along the edge, just like I do when I'm top stitching pull diapers. So now you've got your finished turned and top stitch soaker. You could do the same thing with this one. You can put some quilting on it or a pattern or design, or you can do a channel down the middle. I know a lot of people like to do that to prevent twisting. So you could just do a seam right down the middle to hold it all together. And then there's my snap at the back so that it can snap into another diaper. And you know, it looks just as nice as a serge version. It's not as fast but it is a very viable option if you don't have a serger. The only thing is that it's not as fast. It is just as nice. So there you go. Making diaper inserts with and without a serger. Happy sewing.